Ready to start your ESG journey? Get going today with Social Suite, and you could start reporting publicly in 30 days. With investor pressure mounting and regulations just around the corner, there's never been a better time to start your ESG reporting. Social Suite takes the complexity out of environmental, social, and governance reporting. Social Suite helps organizations to measure, monitor, and report on their progress with fast, simple, and affordable software. Create value through ESG in order to raise capital, improve brand and reputation, as well as mitigate risk. Social Suite has helped almost 100 micro to small cap companies report on ESG, with some starting their baseline report in under 60 minutes and reporting publicly within 30 days. ESG is a lot easier than you think, and you're probably already doing it. So take your sustainability reporting to the next level with measurable progress. Start your ESG journey today with Social Suite, an ESG software company for micro to small caps. Visit socialsuitehq.com. That's social, S-U-I-T-E-H-Q.com to learn more. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not provided as financial, legal, or any other advice. The information is not investment advice or an offer to buy or sell any securities or make any investment. The views expressed by guest speakers are their own and any reference to third-party products, services, or information does not constitute an endorsement thereof by SNN or its affiliates. SNN expressly disclaims all liability for any individual's use of the information presented in this podcast. My guest on the show today is William Trainer, CEO, President, and Director of Vicinity Motor Corp. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is VEV on NASDAQ, as well as VMC on the TSX Venture. Vicinity Motor Corp is a North American supplier of electric vehicles for both public and commercial enterprise use. The company leverages a dealer network and close relationships with world-class manufacturing partners to supply its flagship electric, CNG, and clean diesel vicinity buses, the VMC 1200 electric truck, and a VMC Optimal EV shuttle bus. I've known Vicinity for a long time now, since they were known as Grand West Transportation, and I invited Will on to share their journey, as well as the recently announced $100 million plus purchase order for 1,000 VMC 1200 electric trucks, and what that means for the company diversifying their product offering beyond electric buses for municipalities into electric trucks, managing supply chain disruptions that they and most auto manufacturers experienced, and how 2023 is all about executing their business model. With that, please enjoy my conversation with William Trainer, CEO, President, and Director of Vicinity Motor Corp. Will, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. That's, absolutely. It's great to have you on. Look, man, we've you know, I sound like a broken record on some of these uh, interviews. You're like, oh, we've known each other for a long time, but we really, I mean, we really have. We've done interviews, yeah. you know, back in the Grand West days, you know, before right. the name. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's good to have you on here so we can really kind of de- dig even deeper to the story and maybe give some more perspective for folks that may not have heard the vicinity uh, motor story yet. So as I always like to do on these interviews, my first question to everyone, you know, what would you say is that one line that best describes vicinity? Yeah. Uh- Electric vehicle manufacturer today. I know. There you go. All right. Specifically for buses. Buses, but no, we've uh, we've really branched out. Uh, we've added a lineup of uh, little uh, electric trucks. That's that right. has just been incredible for the business. Absolutely. Actually, I think you showed the last time we chatted. Um, I think I forgot what what uh, conference you were at, but you were just showcasing the new fleet. Uh, if I remember correctly, remember that. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. All right. So now that we uh, you know, we got that one liner, let, let's get into a little bit of history of the company. You know, what was the original problem that you were and the company was looking to solve? And how did you get to where we're at today? Well, you, you know, you've been following us for a while and we really started in 2008. Back in 2008, uh, there were some transit agencies, particularly up here in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, that were looking for a mid-sized bus that didn't exist in the marketplace. So we entered into a strategic partnership with the province of BC, with BC Transit, to build this mid-sized bus. And it's been, you know, it was hugely successful um, on the Canadian uh, market side. We have over 90% market share. It's not a big market uh, size, but, uh, you know, we've done extremely well. And we've really branched and 
tried pushing ourselves uh, into uh, into the U.S. market. That's where the big numbers are. Um, we've built a new factory down in Ferndale, Washington, really to accommodate uh, uh, our growth mode in, in, in the U.S. and expanding our dealer network. But uh, really, the story started in 2008, and it's... Um, it's changed, you know, as the market changes a little bit. We started off with uh, clean diesel buses, uh, added uh, CNG, which really, you know, is, is a lot cleaner than uh, than uh, a diesel bus. And then, of course, uh, as things uh, progress, we added the, the electric vehicles to our lineup. And in doing so with the electric, as we we're developing our little electric um, you know, vicinity lightning uh, product, we added uh, um, uh, a truck, a small truck. And the reason we went down that path is that uh, a lot of the municipalities that are running our buses in the same work yard, they have uh, uh, in their municipal work yard, they, they run a small uh, little uh, work truck. So we really wanted to take and take the, uh, uh, the lumpiness out of the transit bus sales by adding this, this new product. And it's been hugely successful for us, um, you know, as we go through, I'm sure you're dig into it a little bit, but uh, we're really, really proud of our electric vehicles that we have today. And uh, in particular, the uh, the little electric truck. Absolutely. Let, let, okay. So I, I want to dig into that transition to EV, you know, because I think that's, that was one of the, I'd argue, one of the bigger inflection points for the company, you know, going from classic diesel, now we're going full EV. What was some of the reasonings and motivations behind yeah. that? And how difficult was it to make the transition? Well, it's usually uh, difficult. Uh, you know, one of the, one of our strong points is, you know, we really design the vehicle ourselves. Uh, so uh, we um, we looked at what the market is. The market is trending and, and pushing towards uh, cleaner vehicles, particularly in the transit space, which are, you know, uh, mostly government agencies. So there's a lot of funding out there, both on the U.S. side and on the Canadian side, to take these uh, diesel fleets and ensure that they're 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 cleaner. And the cleanest you can get is battery electric vehicles. So that's what pushed us into that uh, into that marketplace. And um, in doing so, you know, we've we're gaining some traction, some pretty good traction. We have, you know, I think it's close to 200 million dollars in backlog right now uh, for vehicles. Um, and most of that is all electric vehicles. So the market is pushing there and, and that, that that's what we're we're giving the market space what they want. Absolutely. You know, I, I, and look, I, I've done a number of interviews with some EV companies, you know, some startup EV, microcap EV companies nowadays. You know, I won't I won't name which ones, you know, obviously you can probably just Google me and see which one, you know. So how has it been dealing with this new competitive landscape and what's been vicinity's value prop? When you've been going out to maybe some, you know, similar sales or sales channels as some of your comps and saying, hey, this is why ours, you know, you should look at ours versus some of our comps. Well, first of all, you know, to get into the marketplace, there's there's a, a big barrier to entry. And I think, you know, because we've been around since 2008, we have a lot of these municipal contracts in place and have buses running in these uh, uh, municipalities, so it was an easy transition for us to to push into the in, into the uh, EV, um, and that's what the customers uh, you know the customers were demanding for the EV. But um, when you're getting into the marketplace, there's more than just getting the the product and developing the product. You really have to service the product. Um, and have the capability to to uh, um, uh, sell and and support it, and I think that's that's our strong uh, uh, strength. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, SPAC companies that come available. A lot of people want to get into the EV space, but to get that to actually make that transition, it's it's a it's a huge leap, um, and that's where I think you know we're we're being successful now. We're we're gaining the orders because when the customers are looking. Um, you know, EV is definitely new out there, but you have to look at, you know, how are you going to service this vehicle? How's the support system in place? So give an example for ourselves. You know, we have um, uh, on the Canadian side here, we have um, uh, support in every province. Um, so the, the customer is, is familiar with our product. But when you look at that support, like we're doing right now, I think we're closing in on close to a thousand buses on the road today. Um our parts department is generating right now about half a million dollars every month in sales 
which bottom line, you know, you make 30, 40% on these. So, you know, $150,000, $200,000 of revenue, uh, um, profitable revenue that's coming in each month. Well, to get that support system in place doesn't come overnight. You know, it's 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 a big, big challenge to get that support system in, in place. And I think that's, you know, when you're looking at us as to some of the competitors in which you can Google and you know, come up with them, um, we have that support um, and we, 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 we have a proven track record. And I think that's really what's going to set us apart from, from the competition. Absolutely. Hey, well, I got another question for you. And it's, it's kind of taking a step back, you know, it, prior to now starting to diversify the, the the fleet a little bit. Why buses, man? Like, you could you have picked a more difficult <laughs> uh, vehicle to get into it just as a business alone and then an EV? I mean, let, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm telling you, the bus market is the, one of the most challenging markets that you're going to jump into, particularly public transit. Because of that support system, because of the uh, w- what the criteria is when, when, you, when you get out and, you, and you're getting a sale, these sales are on the bus side, they don't come easy. Sometimes they're two, three years in the, in the making. But once you're in there and you have uh, shown that you can support the product, it gets a lot easier. Um, give you an example, you know, on the bus side, these tenders come up. So everything is on, on the public realm you, you have to bid on. So an RFP, uh, request for proposal, comes out. Um, when you bid that, what we've seen initially uh, when we entered the market, because we were, we were building a product that really didn't exist, that mid-sized bus market. So when you're looking at the weighted average of how you, how you win some of those contracts, it may be 50% of the price was, was part of the weighted average. Now we're seeing... Uh, we're established we're seeing sometimes 10 percent uh, which is what the big oems in the bus industry have so it, it shows that you've been in there you supported it and now they want your product back in there but you know the biggest thing for us is you know we, we've been successful on the bus we've, we've transitioned into an ev product um proven that it can work we've gone out and won some pretty large contracts uh uh you know calgary transit for one is a five-year contract that we won there was I don't know how many uh, people bid that for an electric uh, um, uh, bid. That's the largest mid-sized product that had come out in the marketplace. Um, and of course, it's it, it, you know we we won it. Um, but what's exciting, I think, is you know when we when we get into it, and is is that a little, little electric truck that we we developed? Um, we launched that truck, and the business model for the truck is a little bit different than what it is for the for the bus. For the bus, we really sell it direct ourselves. On the uh, on the truck, we really wanted to to um, get it out to the marketplace um, uh, and get it in the customer's hands as quickly as possible. So that's the automotive industry. So one of the recent orders that we got for the truck here is from the Pioneer Auto Group out of British Columbia. They're one of the largest uh, auto dealers in the uh, Greater Vancouver Regional District with 19 locations. Uh, they give us an order once they tried the truck, got it out there, took a look at it. They give us an order for a hundred million U.S. dollar order, um, which we'll be, uh, you know, putting into place and, and developing or uh, putting into manufacturing and and uh, pushing it out this uh, this coming year. So 2023 looks looks pretty decent for us. Social Suite takes the complexity out of environmental, social, and governance or ESG reporting. Social Suite helps organizations to measure, monitor, and report on their progress to create value through ESG in order to raise capital, improve brand and reputation, as well as mitigate risk. Social Suite's software platform makes ESG reporting fast, simple, and affordable. Companies can start building a baseline report in under 60 minutes and start reporting publicly within 30 days. Start your ESG journey today. Visit socialsuitehq.com. That's social s u i t e h q dot com to learn more. And so that I, I'm I have the press release pulled up right here. That you guys put you announced that on yeah I was going to get this later, but might as well get to it now. You know you put that out on October 17. This uh, 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 that you secured this hundred million U S purchase order for the electric trucks. So I mean, tell me about how I mean you kind of went into it a little bit, all right? How this deal came about, but I mean, I mean that 
all of a sudden you came out with this new truck and here you go, like a hundred million dollar purchase order for, for that versus, you know, the slog of the buses. So, I mean, is this yeah. now, you, or tell us a little bit more about the deal. And then is this now more of the priority in terms of strategic direction or love to hear more there? No, it's not. It's, 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 uh, you know, it supplements what we're doing. Um, but uh, we're really, really excited about it. When we, when we first built the truck, it was to take the lumpiness out of the bus business in, in, into the municipalities. But well, once we got the truck launched here and then started showing it around, uh, we got uh, uh, you know some interest from the auto dealers. And I think that makes perfect sense for us because when you look at, a, uh, at an auto dealer, they want to take the truck, they want it completed, 100% ready, put it on their yard. They have financing, they have floor planning, they have financing available to the customer. And that's, that's, I think that's the key here. You know, when we look at a lot of these work trucks and we look at the, um, you know, who's running them, definitely they're in municipalities. That's one of the biggest uses for it. Because when you look at the municipal side, you have uh, uh, cities and municipalities, they have to service the parks. And you can't take a regular garbage truck into the parks and pick up your bins. So you need to have a small vehicle that goes in and really collects the garbage out of the out of the garbage cans on a daily basis or, or you know a couple of days every couple of days. So that's on the municipal side. But on the uh, on the private side, on the truck side, um, we see a lot of uh, activity for it for dry boxes. If you look at you know like DHL and Purolator, you know companies like that, um, there there's a lot of owner operators. Uh, even Amazon, um, uh, there's uh, owner operator. Somebody's bought the truck. You know, they they, they get a contract to deliver certain pieces of of of, of uh, those parcels and, and things like that. And that's or, that's really city deliveries. Um, you know, last mile type of delivery uh, units. Um, and that's where this automotive uh, sector fits out perfect for us because a lot of these. I'll use um, like DHL here in, in the Vancouver area. There's 500 DHL trucks running around. Every one of them is privately owned. So we've had ex expressed interest from every, every single one of those uh, uh, gentlemen are running those trucks. Uh, because when you look at the EV truck, um, we did a study um, uh, with, with the truck. You know, if you take the amount of diesel fuel you put in a standard truck that's running, and then you look at the, the electrical char uh, that you're putting in, this truck was designed to go out and do, you know, 200, 200 and, uh, 250 kilometers or, you know, uh, 200 miles uh, a day, sort of, so to speak. That's what these delivery trucks are doing. They're all doing under that capacity and they're all smaller weight classifications. Um, you know, they, they want to have a payload of you know, 4,000 pounds. So our truck fits perfectly for that, that segment of, of, of the business. And, um, uh, what we did when we actually designed our electric vehicles, we looked at, you know, what makes an electric vehicle successful? So, you know, it's it's the, the cost value that you're going to uh, save by not putting the diesel in it as one. And on the electric delivery, uh, on the delivery truck, when I say a DHL person going out there and running it, the studies that we uh, um, uh, ran and did some tests running, uh, running the vehicles around, they're saving anywhere from... From fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month on the fuel cost. That's fuel alone. So it makes perfect sense for a lot of these operators to 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 run the vehicle, and then they're running it small distances. But when we developed the uh, the unit, we really developed it with the operator in mind, both on the bus side and on the truck side. And what that means is we looked at you know what does Tesla do? What, what made Tesla successful? You go out, you buy your electric vehicle. It comes with the plug. So you can take it home and you can charge it on what's called a level two charging, which is standard 240 volt single phase power because it's got an onboard charger on it. So you just need to have somebody put a like a, a, a dryer plug or a range plug in your in your garage or on the outside of your garage. You pull up, you got your cord, you plug it in, it charges in four to five hours, which we consider to be an overnight charge. And then you go out and you can run your 200, uh, uh, 200 250 kilometers in, in a day. So it's the perfect vehicle for that type of application for, you know, city urban deliveries. Um, and that's what we designed it for. And that's really, you know, once the auto industry started to take a look at it, in particular here in BC with the Pioneer Auto Group, that's what they seen. They started off with a small order. It sold out. 
we got the deliveries in and of course uh to secure their deliveries what they need for next year they looked at it and and looked at a thousand units was not unreal to put into the marketplace for for one province of bc now we got to expand that out and we got to you know really get the other provinces and then get into the into the bigger market which is the the u.s market but we're well positioned for that because you know we've got a factory that we just completed um, we had a little issues with some electrical uh, power supply going into it, but that, that that's solved. You know, we should be having our occupancy permit any day now for the uh, for the Ferndale facility. And timing's perfect because we need that facility, both for our buses, but right now for our trucks. You know, we're going to uh, do our um, assembly of our trucks down in the Ferndale facility. And, you know, we look at that facility, if we we're just doing... Trucks alone, it's, it's easy to do six, 10,000 vehicles. You want to run a couple of shifts. So we've got the capacity there to really produce the vehicles um, uh, and, uh, and, and distribute them out to, to our dealer network from there. Absolutely. So uh, this is a, a burning question. I'm sure everybody probably wants me to follow up with that. So I have to ask, you know, uh, look, r- this is a big order. For you know, yeah. at, we're recording this uh, on December sixteenth on Friday. You know, market cap thirty five million right now for the company, a hundred million order, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, in terms of of margin and profitability on an order of this mag- magnitude, you know, what does that what does that look like? Well, the EVs, you know, we've targeted to be in a call it thirty uh, percent uh, margin so, uh, for the vehicle, but you know, I think one of the things that that you know, people are looking at and saying, okay, you know, you've got capacity, you've got a factory coming on, you know, you've got you got the order book definitely, and, and we're looking to expand that order book out greatly, particularly on both bus and, tr- and, and, and on the truck side. But you know, the biggest challenge that people are saying, how are, how are you going to build them? How are you going to how are you going to finance those vehicles? So you know, I don't want to get into great details on that right now, but you know, we'll have some some news releases and, and you know, give the public. Uh, uh, some information, you know, in the new year, but, uh, you know, we're working on expanding our credit facilities and, and we'll announce that uh, in, in the new year. But, uh, you know, that was the last little piece of the puzzle that was left and it's it's looking good for us. Absolutely. Because and, and then another follow up on this, because you mentioned in and you alluded to it already a little bit, you know, in terms of uh, the electric supply issue, you know, in the in the uh, Q3 uh, uh, results, you know, one of the things you talked about in that release was that, you know, sales were down year over year because there was some supply chain issues. So so I'm sure some people are hearing like, all right, $100 million purchase store. But wait, there was some supply chain issues last. Like, all right, have we figured that out. Like, let, let's understand that a little more. Yeah, we've been we have uh, been plagued with supply chain issues, much like some of the larger OEMs. You know, you can Google it; you, the people know who they are. But uh, um, there has been on the bus side, there has been some major uh, supply chain issues. You know, we're we're working through that. Um, the truck side, no, we don't see that. It's it's simpler. And you know, what I like to say is, you know, if you look at a bus, there's probably three thousand line items to build a bus. There's five hundred on a truck. It's a lot simpler to build a truck than it is to build a, a bus. So we're not anticipating to see uh, supply chain issues on, on, the, on the truck side. Uh, the bus side, yes, we have had some, but uh, you know we, we do see our, ourselves coming through that. So um, they only stay there for so long, but uh, it's, it's been a challenging year, uh, 2022, but uh, you know, we really look forward to seeing 2023 come in and you know, what we've got planned for. <laughs> I think a lot of people are looking forward to 2023 to be fair. So, yeah. so I think I can appreciate that for sure. Um, you know, in terms of supply, I mean, one of the biggest things when you talk about EV is like where you're getting some of your materials, especially on the battery side, you know, yes. where 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 that's being built and all that. Can you give us some color on just sure. the batteries for, for everything? Yeah, we have three different suppliers for batteries. And what we've really tried to do is diversify ourselves out to have multiple suppliers on all the parts and pieces because of the issues that we've ran into. Um, you know, we had on the bus side, we ran into, you know, some multiplexing issues. And I don't want to name the companies, but, uh, uh, you know, it's been challenging, really challenging to get some of these uh, parts and pieces. And a lot of them are related to the chip industry, you know, the, the computer chip industry. That's what's caused a, an awful lot of supply chain issues that, that we've seen and, uh, and our competitors have, have seen. 
but the truck is a lot simpler vehicle um, and the truck is really automotive grade quality. So when, when we say that, the automotive industry, yes, they've had challenges, but it is coming together on the automotive side. And that's where we've really tried to select these, these parts and pieces and, you know, from motor suppliers to battery suppliers to wiring uh, uh, suppliers and, and, and all of the gamut that goes through that. Um, you know, uh, uh, and uh, I think we're, you know, we've got a, a, a pretty good plan um, and particularly on these, on these, on these trucks. You know, Will, you've been in this for a long time, right? It's 2008. You're coming up on 15 years in, in, yeah. in this. I mean, you know, what what were, what was it your original inspiration for 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 the company? You know, what what were you doing prior that you're like, all right, I think it's time for me to make this move into into vicinity. Well, yeah, well, my Grand background. Yeah, my background was in heavy construction. I had some heavy construction uh, equipment dealers. Um, that I owned and operated here in the province of BC, you know, kind of phased out of that, wanted to get more into a, a, a slower retirement uh, position. Um, and then, you know, the bus uh, opportunity come up and then I stepped back in. Um, and, you know, the vision for that was really to build out a company. It was, you know, if, if I really have to be honest, you know, I didn't think it was going to be as challenging as what it was on the, on the municipal side. Um, the government side is is great. You know, when you when you get an order, they're not light orders. They're they're usually you know three, five, seven year contracts that you're that you're getting. Um, uh, and uh, you know, you look at the credit. The, the credit is golden. So you know, that's the nice thing about about that type of industry is that you 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 don't have any AR problems, you know, collection problems because once you get an order. Um, you know, no, they don't like to pay deposits and we're not singled out for that, but government contracts, uh, they're, they're considered, you know, the top of what you're going to get. Now we, we've really had to look at the, the truck industry and that's why, you know, the business model for the truck industry, when we look at the, like this dealer network that we've got set up here in British Columbia and then more like it across the, across the country, um, we like that as well. Because when you get into a large um, uh, dealer, auto dealer network, um, they're they're very uh, uh, well healed. They're large groups. Um, you know, there's no credit problems with the with the auto industry. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, we deal with, with like example Pioneer Auto Group. Uh, they have large floor plan. You know, we invoice them. We're paid before the vehicles leave our yard. So it's a, it's it's a solid business. Um, uh, I like that. You know, uh, it's it gives you good security on on that side. Now it's just a matter of, uh, of building a product and really concentrating on the manufacturing side. Absolutely. So you know, look, you, vicinity has gone to many of the conferences. Or you you've been to our conferences many times yep. and participated. Thank you. Uh, by the way. Um, you know, so you've done tons of one-on-one -on -one meetings with investors. You've done all, you've done the roads, you've done the full gamut. You know, yeah. what's been some of the more frequently asked questions that you get either recently or maybe that's been the same question over time and maybe we can address them here. Sure. Well, you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, uh, what's your order book? You know, how secure is it? Um, how are you going to manufacture it? And then it comes down, you know, What's your capital like to manufacture? Those are the three questions that, that come up consistently. Um, you know, we have a strong order book. It's uh, it's all uh, you know, tier one credit. Uh, we have a manufacturing facility that we've just come on that's just coming online. And like I said, we'll news release um, here early in the year what our what our credit facility is like. So, you know, I like I said, I I, I really think you know, twenty twenty three is the really the big uh, big uh, uh, change point for us and you know when we're looking at investors you, you, you look at what our market cap is and what our what our order book is it, it you know, really doesn't make sense but uh, uh, you know I think people just want to see us start delivering and, and you know being cash flow and even up prof uh, profitable each uh, each quarter and it's uh, definitely got to make an impact on the on the yeah, share price for sure and look you don't blame them right of course no. yeah like every, that's what people want to see yeah so. so i mean so what is that i mean 
in terms of the path to profitability, right? You know, let, let's get into that too. I mean, is it just continuing to get those orders out there, get deliveries in? I mean, is that really the main path right now when you're thinking about, you know, from this point on and, and moving forward? It's execution. Yeah. We, we, we need to, we need to deliver the product. And then I don't think there's any stop in the uh, the share price. You know, we're listed on the Nasdaq and we're listed on the on the TSXV. Um, you know, the eyes are definitely on us. I do believe, and we just got it. We just got to execute and deliver. So, are you going to pull a Musk? Or are you going to sleep on the on the assembly lines? You know, at the, <laughs> at, at the facility to make this happen. I mean, people want to know. Yeah, you, you know, you got to put good people in place. So we're in the process right now of setting up that Ferndale facility down in Washington and making sure it's uh, it's capable to deliver the product. Um, but, you know, we do a lot of contract manufacturing as well. That's where we started. Um, and I'm really happy to see that we're, you know, we've got our own facility come into play. In play. Um, you know, it, uh, it, there's nothing like doing your own manufacturing. Um you know the uh, where was I going with this? Um, the factory is uh, it's on I think it's four point two uh, acres. Uh, the footprint of what we have for space down there, I think, if you take all the working space, is close to a hundred thousand square feet. And the nice thing about it is that when you custom build the product, uh, you know the the facility the way you want, it's it's all brand new, it's all state of the art. You know everything's in place for it. Um, you know, we hope to have a, a grand opening down there here in, in January, um, uh, and get the uh, get the um, governor back up um, and really showcase what we can do down there. Absolutely. Hey, you know, another question I have. You, you know, you mentioned throughout the interview, and like from what I know, of course, is uh, you know you have significant market share in in Canada already on the bus side and now with a hundred million dollar order on the on the truck side. Yeah. What's been the hardest part about entering the US market? Because that's something we've talked about many times in other interviews. So what what's been the most difficult part in actually getting in the US? Well we have you know we need to like I said we're well established on the Canadian side, but our our growth is on the US side. So one, you got to take control of your own destiny. And we were doing some contract manufacturing. It, it doesn't work out as well. Um, the customer base, you know, particularly if we look at the on the uh, uh, order book for the buses, they want to see that you're building the product and you're delivering the product. That's that's key. And I think that's what that's what the Ferndale shows. You know, we've got some large. Um, if you go back on some of our news releases, we got some. Some very large uh, contracts that are still pending out there. You know, one is the state of California contract that's coming up, um, and you know we're we're online. We're we're looking good on all these contracts. We've expanded our dealer network in the U.S. Um, like I said, in Canada, we we really market direct, but on the on the U.S. side, we've expanded our dealer network. Um, you need brick and mortar in a lot of these states to qualify for the for the bids. So you know, if you went online and took a look, you know, we've got we've got some nice groups that we've uh, we've established ourselves with. Um, you know, one of them is the ABC Group of Companies. They're they're a pretty large powerhouse. Uh, uh, they uh, take a lot of the uh, space or a lot of the uh, um, uh, U.S. up for us. Uh, you know, one in particular. If you look at California, they got three mega locations there. A lot of these contracts that we're bidding, they're state contracts. You need to have. You need to show that you can support uh, the product. Um, you know, if I just use it, uh, the Calac tender themselves that, that was out, and it, it hasn't been officially put on the street yet. But uh, uh, we've been waiting on that for quite some time. You know, government doesn't move quick. Uh, but um, you know, for that contract, you need you needed to prove that you could you could build a product um, in the U.S. That, you know, so they they come up, they audit the the facility, they audit your dealer network. You know, because they're looking at it, you, you just can't build the product. You got to support the product. So, where's your parts? You know, how's your parts support? Where's you know, if the bus was in an accident, where's it going to go to get repaired? Um, and that's where you know, if we look at California in particular, I'm just highlighting that just that one state for now. But you know, the ABC group's got three pretty major locations there. So we passed all the uh, all the criteria for the for the tender, and it just it hasn't come out yet. It hasn't been let on the street, but uh, that's just one of them. So I think we're we're positioned well for for our growth, and you know we've got a we've got a, a sales team in place, and you know a, a 
a, a network in place for for the U.S. Um, you know, truck side, we haven't really looked at how we're going to push that out. But uh, given the success we've had here in Canada, it's not going to be an issue expanding that dealer network on the truck side out in the U.S. as well. Absolutely. So, you know, this is a question I ask everybody on here as well, and it has to do with downside risk. I mean, obviously, the main one without even having to ask is clearly execution right but yeah. in your but in your opinion i mean is there any other existential or uh company uh, downside risk that you foresee that maybe folks should pay attention to just just for their own awareness no uh you know i'm trying to be honest here but no you know we've we've built a great product um uh, it's been validated because we've got orders on it both on the bus side and on the uh, on the truck side you know, we have the support system in place. It's just really now just getting that. We have orders to deliver on. It's just it's just pushing pushing the product through. Absolutely. All right. So then another question I ask everybody on here, you know, for you, where, where do you want to see the company in three to five years? And what would you say are some of the inflection points that'll get you there? Sure. Well, for us, it's it's growth and growth comes from your, from your order book. So, you know, where do I want to see the company? I, I really believe we can strongly get ourselves to a billion dollars in revenue within the next uh, three to five years. Um, definitely you get hundred million dollar orders. Uh, it doesn't take much to, you know, to build on that, but you know, I, I want to see us as a, as a, you know, a powerhouse uh, and really um, focused in our, our you know, niche that we want to be in. Um, you know, you can't be everything to everybody, but if you concentrate very well on the industry that you want to, be in you can you can focus and and you know really do well within that sector and you know if we look at the truck sector you know that small work truck sector it's it's been passed over you know a lot of the the truck uh, market people when you look at it they want to they want to get into the bigger market you know the bigger market is your you know your class six seven and eight truck which are really your your big truck deliveries your long haul deliveries your your semi trucks and you know tractor trailer trucks that's where the big market is but it, it's dominated by some pretty pretty large players. You know, I like to go back and go uh, look at, you know, when we went into the bus industry. You know, if you did a business case, you'd say, well, you'd, you'd better go get in the 40-foot bus market. That's where that's where the big market is. But reality is you'd, you'd never be able to penetrate it. Uh, you know, the once the, the customer base is, is happy with that product, they tailor the tenders around what they want to see. And the price may only be five or 10% weighted uh, average to, to win a tender. So, uh, you know, and we're seeing that on the bus side now, now that we're established. So you have to really look at, you know, where you want to be in the market and, and where your marketplace is and where you fit in that market. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's what we've done as, as a group. We've really, you know, realized where we can fit and, and gone out and, and developed it out from there. Absolutely. So another another question I like to ask a lot of folks on here, and again, this ties into your experience having gone to you know so many investor conferences, the road shows, and the one on ones, all that kind of stuff. You know, how much, if at all, have your shareholders or potential investors influenced some of your decision making process? Well, um, I can't say they don't, but you know, reality is is that you know you need to have a solid business plan, and you have to need to execute it. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of times that doesn't match up with what uh, investor expectations are because, you know, I invest as well. And what do I want? You want you want quick profit. You want you want to see quick returns. And, you know, unfortunately, some of these things aren't aren't short term plays, you know, like, like us. We've been around since 2008. Um, but, uh, you know, I think our inflection point is here now. I think, you know, 2023 is really the year that we're going to we're going to accomplish uh, a lot of our goals. and. and Really, for us, uh, you know, I'm one of the large shareholders of uh, VMC as well. And, you know, the original group that we put together, um, we're still the we're, we're still in there. You know, we haven't sold our shares off. It's easy enough to, you know, look it up on CDAR and, and see where, you know, where the uh, where the share structure is. But, um, uh, you know, I want to see uh, I want to build uh, shareholder value as well. Absolutely. All right. Final question for you today to close us out. You know, like you said, you've been uh, you've been at this for 15 years. Um, you know, how's been your experience being a public company CEO? You know, has it been, all, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've experienced the gamut, but, you know, I, 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 how would you say it in your own words? 
how would I say it? Well, it's definitely more challenging than on the private side. There's no question about it. Um, but uh, in general, no. You know, you, you go public for one reason, access to capital. Um, because, uh, you know, to execute on some of these uh, big visions, it, it takes that capital. And, um, you know, that's that's why we're here. And, you know, now I think we're at the inflection point where that shareholder value, I think we're really going to see it come in in this new year. Absolutely. All right. Well, Will, thank you so much for joining me today. Where can our audience go and find more information on Vicinity Motor? Right on uh, vicinitymotor.com. And uh, if you click on there, there's actually a separate site for the trucks. So it's vmctrucks.com. Uh, uh, um, it'll give you all the information that you want. Very good. All right. Well, Will, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I'll, I'll, I'll see you in 2023, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Well, happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Okay. Thanks. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not provided as financial, legal, or any other advice. The information is not investment advice or an offer to buy or sell any securities or make any investment. The views expressed by guest speakers are their own and any reference to third-party products, services, or information does not constitute an endorsement thereof by SNN or its affiliates. SNN expressly disclaims all liability for any individual's use of the information presented in this podcast.